You're listening to Two Smart Assets with Chris Thompson and Danny Nichols. This is your source for passive investing in real estate syndications. It's time for us to gain knowledge and take action. So let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. This is the Two Smart Assets Podcast. I am your host, Danny Nichols, here once again with my co-host, Chris Thompson. Hey, what's going on, Danny? It's good to see you, man. Good to see you too, man. What an episode we had today. Tell the listeners what we're talking about. Okay, so today we brought in Bernard Reese. Bernard is a CPA, among many other things. And uh, today we spoke about and dispelled some of the misinformation that just comes along with self-directed retirement plans. Uh, Bernard also spoke in depth about the importance of empowering investors to help break them free from that cycle of dependence that's just been fostered by so many of the financial sales operations. Bernard's highly intelligent and uh, really cool to talk to. Super smart guy, and he drops a ton of information in the show. Great tips as well. Uh, But before we get into it, just want to give a quick shout out to all our listeners. We really appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a rating and written review. It really helps us grow the podcast, attract more guests, and ultimately provide better information for everyone listening. And if you're a passive investor or looking to get into passive investing, then head over to our website at twosmartassets.com. There you can grab our guide for passive investing in apartment syndications. Just a great introduction in the world of passive investing in apartment syndications. So make sure to check that out. Also, grab our apartment syndication sample deal. This is going to help you get comfortable with looking at this type of investment. So when the real opportunities come your way, you'll be ready. If you have any questions about what's in either of these resources, drop us a line anytime on our website's contact us page, or you can message us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. We'll post some great content on there, so make sure to follow us and start connecting. All right, let's jump into the show. What's going on, everybody? Today's guest is Bernard Reese. Bernard has a background in tax, accounting, due diligence, consulting, and advisory services. His current focus is empowering investors to build rock-solid financial foundations while breaking the cycle of dependence fostered by financial sales operations. Bernard, it's great to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Dan and Chris. uh, Thanks so much for inviting me on. I've been looking forward to this and let's get rolling. Very excited about this to have you on the show. We've been been, uh, anxious for a while to get you on here. So uh, let's just dive into it and talk about growing uh, well through self-directed retirement accounts. That's kind of the topic of the day. Uh, But to get us started, tell the listeners a bit more about your background and how you came to be in the business you are today. Glad to do that. So I am a CPA, but I've also got a life insurance license, a securities license. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other designations and certifications. And what I've realized in my travels in the financial world and tax world that includes it, is included in financials, is that for the most part, um, investors, taxpayers, whatever you want to, whatever your role is in this space, when you're being a client, uh, you're getting the short end of the stick. Uh, you're being sold products um, rather than really being empowered and educated. And my goal is to empower people and to educate them. Um, And so a big part of what I've done is to have a focus on self-directed retirement accounts. Uh, But in fact, I expand this to taxes, traditional financial advisory and investing. It's all about empowering people rather than selling to them. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. And you know, there's a lot of great stuff there and I kind of want to dive into what you just you brought up at the very beginning. You know, a lot you talking about some of these new investors, they're basically getting sold to. There's something happening there that they're missing out on. Maybe they're being, you know, given some bad advice or something like that. Can you give us some examples of maybe what that might be or something specific so our listeners can really take that and be like, "Oh, maybe that was me." You know, kind of something like that. Yeah, it's true across all financial domains, uh, but it's very prevalent in the traditional financial space. And what happens in the financial space that's different when you go into a used car dealership, you get it. You know, like, all right, I'm here to get a car and he's here to sell me as best as he can for the highest price that he can. And you go in there, you've got your guard up. Uh, the trouble with the financial space is that everybody that sells the financial space presents himself as your advisor. Um, and people kind of think that, all right, I can trust him. Um, and then that trust often gets betrayed. Uh, another component of it is the way, you know, oftentimes when you go into any marketplace, what you see is what you get. You know, at the extreme end, you go to buy a pair of shoes, a shirt, you kind of know what you're getting. 
Uh, and if it's not exactly what you think it is, it's not that far off. It kind of le- you read the tag, you look at it, and you know what it is. In the financial space, it's an intangible, and what you're really getting is totally concealed from you. Uh, so whereas in every other place you can say what you see is what you get, in the financial space, what you get is what you don't see. And mm. there are all sorts of, everything has pros and cons. Right. And the thing is, in the financial world, I find people buying things and they're like, wow, this is the most amazing thing. And when I tell people, if you don't know what the con is, don't buy it because that means there's a surprise for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. So that surprise may not, and part of the challenge though is, kind of that surprise may only come in five years or 10 years, but it's too late, right? So if you buy something, a shoddy product, right? You can know in a couple of days usually, hey, this is a bad product, right? You buy it, even an electronic item. Uh, but when you buy these financial and tax products, it can take years for people to find out that they've made a mistake. Uh, now, in terms of actual stories, um, there are so, so many of them. Unfortunately, I got daily, daily stories. A lot of them come from the life insurance space, uh, but I found that there exist even in the self-directed space. So since we're talking about self-directed, let's drill in right there. How does that sound? Great, great. perfect. So in the self-directed space, which is something that all investors should be aware of, um, and again, that's something you go to your traditional financial advisor, you know, they're not going to tell you about this. And if you mention that you're considering it, they may say that this is illegal, that this is crazy. Um, it's certainly legal, certainly not crazy. Doesn't mean you should do it, but you should definitely consider it. Uh, now, what happens is in the self-directed space, it enables you to take retirement accounts, tax sheltered accounts crafted within the tax code. So that's your IRAs, your qualified retirement plans, 401ks, defined benefit plans, and invest them in real estate and other alternative assets. Uh, and alternative, and this discussion just means something that you're not going to get from financial advisor or from a brokerage account. Uh, so anything that's not publicly traded stocks, uh, but it shouldn't surprise anybody that real estate or some real estate angle is the most popular use for these accounts. Right. So what happens in self-directed space, sometimes people get really excited and, hey, let's go do this. Uh, but then the way this space is structured is that most of the people that actually, most of the companies, service providers in this space are focused on setting up accounts, getting the paperwork done, and that's how they're going to make their money. And they're not focused on really educating people. So it's all about, all right, what kind of accounts do we sell? And let's push that as hard as possible. So some companies, service providers focus on self-directed IRAs and they do not emphasize qualified retirement plans. So they're going to push that very strongly and not let you know about the pitfalls um, in their space. The opposite end of the spectrum, we've got service providers that focus on qualified retirement plans or 401k plans. And they're going to push those and not tell you the pitfalls that are there. So once again, uh, we find our well-meaning investor in a marketplace uh, where he's not equipped to deal with his counterparties. Um, and so something that, you know, sometimes people say, hey, Bernard, you're against the stock market. I am not against the stock market. <laughs> um, I invest in the stock market. I invest in real estate. I'm against people being sold. Uh, based on half truths, and that exists any well, any time anybody's got something to sell. Uh, so it exists in the fin traditional financial advisory space, and it exists in self directed space that people are getting sold a product rather than being empowered and educated. So let's talk about some of the mistakes. Um, are you guys familiar? Because I'll bring up one of the things that drives a lot of this. Are you guys familiar with UBIT UDFI? Yes, sir. But we can go over it absolutely for our listeners if we need to. So, okay. So let's talk about that for a moment. So, UD, UBIT, broadly speaking, is a kind of tax that even tax sheltered entities have to pay. And that includes not just self directed retirement accounts, that includes your charities, your United Way, your Red Cross. And in fact, if you want to go online, you can find the Red Cross's tax return that's publicly available. 
So there are taxes that even tax sheltered entities can be subject to. And being that this is a real estate focused conversation, we'll talk about UDFI, which is the one that you're most likely to encounter with a syndication. And UDFI is a tax that gets applied when a tax sheltered entity uses leverage to invest in an asset. And this is something that causes, intimidates people. And it's been used as a tool either by those that don't talk about it to get people to make mistakes or those that totally inflate um, its impact cause some investors to make different poor choices. Uh, so let's talk for a moment about what UDFI is in the background, just so people understand and we can put it into perspective. Perfect. Um, and if I may ask, have you guys had investors invest and encounter UDFI? Have you seen it in action? We have seen it through other investors, but us uh, through our investors, we have not seen that yet. So, Got it. Okay. And, and that makes sense um, because it's a bit of a mythical creature. Um, as you'll see, it doesn't really end up showing up for a while. So here's the deal with UDFI. And we'll, we'll, the backstory behind this is kind of complex, but the, sh, you know, the bottom line is that way back early 1960s, tax sheltered entities were using leverage um, in an abusive way. So Congress said that if, even though you're a tax sheltered entity and your investment returns should be tax free to the extent you're using leverage, we're going to tax that. So if you go into a deal and you're a charitable entity, and 50% equity in the deal, 50% leverage, 50% of the return is taxed, is taxable. So it's important to note that the 50% equity remains tax-free. Right. Um, so the 50% portion can be taxable. Beyond that, um, the tax rate potentially can be higher than it would be for an individual because it gets paid at trust tax rates, which are the same tax rates as an individual but the brackets are compressed. So meaning at about $13,000 of taxable income, you're already at the highest bracket. So this is not unique to real estate. Hedge funds encounter it. Anybody that uses leverage and you have a charity or retirement account investing, um, you're going to encounter this UDFI. So it's not a real estate thing, but to take this to the next level, qualified retirement plans, which is a certain group of tax sheltered accounts have an exception for real estate acquisition indebtedness. Short story, um, if a qualified retirement plan uses leverage to invest in real estate, the tax is not incurred. Mm -hmm. So here we get kind of a fork in the road for every investor. They got to choose, am I going to invest in real estate using some kind of IRA or some kind of qualified retirement plan? So that's a fork in the road that every investor should encounter um, and that they have to navigate with real expertise. And what's going out in the marketplace right now is a lot of misinformation. Any questions so far? I know I've yeah, been talking I, a lot. Well, I do have something, but I want to talk about that misinformation. I want to circle back to that. So I'm going to make a note of that real quick, but I do want to touch on one thing because I actually have somebody that I was talking to the other day, just the other day, and they're kind of, they've been making money for a while and they're looking to get some sort of financial advisory services, but there's so much out there, you know, and, and really what I've, what I've come to learn from them is basically, they're just, it's a lot of confusion, right? And uh, it, it just kind of reminded me how overwhelming this whole thing can be just because there's so many providers, there's so many options out there. And whether we're talking about financial services or we're talking about somebody who's looking to actually get into a self-directed uh, account of some sort, just, you know, like you said, just those two different avenues, there's so much to those two different things and you could be sold by so many different people. So if we're backtracking just a little bit, just to, just to kind of go over what this, I was talking about with this person is, what would you say with that person in mind, the first step they should take? to get started? Because I mean, we got so many people on here looking to get into something like that, but there's just so much out there, you know, to your point, what do you think their first step should be? Yeah. And so with self-directed accounts, um, it's such a niche service. And I know this is going to sound like a shameless plug, but it's, it's really niche. So if you're going to talk about regular financial stuff, you know, I can, there are other folks that I can say, all right, that's a good guy sure. or that's a good route. Self-directed space Every company out there is more or less there to push their paperwork. Mm. Um, and the paperwork 
don't let anybody deceive you is fairly generic. Right. Uh, so somebody says, I've got the magical paperwork. That just means run the other <laughs> way. <laughs> Perfect. That's good advice. Noted. Uh, there is no, now if you want to, the general rule is I say, look for people that have a substantive background. So not unique to self-directed across all areas. Um, look for people that have a background. Um, I happen to be a CPA, but it's not why I say CPA. Uh, I'll just give you some examples. CPA, CFA, doctor, attorney, right? Mm. Of course, in every area, there are going to be folks that are good and folks that are not going to be that great. Uh, but in those spaces, you have people that have demonstrated that they're, they've committed before selling anything, they committed to seven years of school, at least, right? right. Seven years of education. Every other financial service provider has come up through a sales role, not through a substantive role. And what happens is they end up learning enough to be dangerous. Right. And what is that? That means they can talk a game that makes, that sounds good and sounds like they know everything. Um, and it may impress you, uh, but that means they just know a little bit more than you. They've hung around the space. So that's what I say. Look for people that have come up through a substantive route that means that before they've gotten the phone to talk to you or before they set up their own business, uh, that means they, they committed to going through a rigorous process. It says a lot about their mentality um, and their approach and their ethos, the fact that they came up through that route, whereas somebody that either came up through a sales route or somebody that one day woke up and said, hey, it really doesn't take anything to get the paperwork. I can buy the paperwork and I can sell it and I can tell people this is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, and just sell it. There was a comedian. Have you guys ever heard of Jackie Mason? Oh, yeah. You've heard of Jackie Mason? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, he's, he, he once quipped. He says, you know, who made up, uh, you know, who invented sushi? He says, the two guys sitting on a park bench thinking, how can you open up a restaurant without a kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> love Good. it. I love it. <laughs> right. So a lot of these stuff out there, right, you can go out there, buy documents, or buy this, or get plugged into some platform, and then start selling. So anybody can open up a restaurant, open up a shop that sells this, that, or the other without a kitchen, right? So that, that's what I'd say to people. You got to look for somebody with substance, um, radical transparency. And if you can't get that transparency, um, that means there's something you don't know. And the trouble with not knowing is the better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Right. Um, and some of these mistakes are not corrected. So somebody, say, for example, sets up a qualified retirement plan. Um, let's just use QRP for short, right? And they move all their funds in there. And they are not a good fit for a QRP based on their tax profile, right? What they have is a taxable account, right? right. And they have early distributions with penalties from their retirement account. So that is a costly mistake. And you don't want to take these things lightly. Uh, we're not against people taking risks, but we want people to take informed risks or right. calculated risks. Absolutely. Um, understand what's going on. Cool. That, that, those are some great points. And I know I can take a lot away from that, but I know our listeners will as well. And I kind of want to circle back with that in mind, you know, kind of where people should get started, what they should look out for. Uh, you mentioned earlier about there's a lot of misinformation out there. Let's dive into some of that misinformation that these people, these investors should be aware of. Yeah. And, and it's very hard to get by this. And I don't know if, if, if I may say this, but what happens is you guys are, I'm going out on a limb here by saying this. Uh, so there are some, right, this is self-directed retirement accounts are a bridge kind of between funds, investable assets, and deals. So it's an integral part of syndication. Um, and it can actually put sometimes put investors um, at odds with the syndicator. And sometimes the syndicator is, is well, well-meaning. Uh, so I've actually, for example, I've spoken to one syndicator. He's like, Bernard, I want to send you guys to invest with me. Don't tell them about U UDFI. Hmm. And I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I've had a, somebody else say, speaking to a syndicator, I'm saying, all right, can I send somebody? I'd like to work with your clients. Um, you know, we can work together and get you guys money into deals. Uh, and then they said, okay, just we need to do some due diligence on you. And I'm like, cool, I love due diligence. Due diligence is a big part of my background. And the due diligence question was essentially, how much of a kickback are you going to give us? 
So, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, because, you know, the guy that we're referring to now, he's giving us X. How much are you going to give us? And I'm like, wow, that's about my entire fee. Right? <laughs> so that guy charges twice as much so he can, so he can give kick you back um, a portion of it or a big portion of it. Wow. So it's, there's a lot of navigating the space um, is tricky. And so let's talk about what's going on. So UDFI, being that IRAs are subject to it, so some people that are looking at IRAs are either not told about it, um, it kind of gets swept under the rug. Um, so everybody knows it exists. And if you're working with an IRA custodian, right, they're not really going to mention it. They're going to pay it some sort of lip service. It's buried somewhere in the fine print. They're not really going to talk about it. Sure. It's not their responsibility. It's yours. Um, their, their focus is getting the account set up. And, you know, if you find out about UDFI at some point, they're going to say, hey, don't you see on page 27 in the fine print? If you pull out your magnifying glass, it says clearly that right. you are clearly that UDFI is your problem. <laughs> then there are some folks out there that are using UDFI to tell people don't use IRAs for real estate, just stay in stocks, right? So if you go to your financial advisor and he knows about UDFI, he's going to tell you, watch out for this UDFI thing, just stay invested in stocks. Then some real estate folks that need you to get your money into your own deals right? And so with retirement accounts, they're hitting some sort of issues with that. They're going to say, just cash out your IRA. Don't use your IRA for real estate. Use UDFI, cash it out, pay the tax, pay the penalty. So that's another, and most of these, all these things I'm describing are usually mistakes. Of course, there are exceptions. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually a, a lot going on there. And, you know, I think with, you know, you're talking about these mistakes and a lot of these, these mistakes out there. I think that with there's so much information out there, just in general, for a new investor, for somebody who's looking to get into something like this, for all this information, just to wrap their minds around, you know, it's a, it's a lot. So uh, being able to provide that information and for like our investors to look out for is great tips. I really appreciate you uh, talking yeah. more about so that. So these sure. resources, like one of the reasons I do, I'll talk about the one, the last error for, before we talk about that. And the other way this is used is to get people into QRPs that are not a good fit for them because mm -hmm. QR qualified retirement plans are exempted from real estate UDFI. So there are four things that are four potential mistakes that are happening with this UDFI. Either people are not being told about it and they're getting into an IRA and they just have no idea, or they're being told about it and being scared off from using a retirement account for real estate. Number three, they're being told, hey, because UDFI thing, cash out your retirement account in a taxable penalty, penalty withdrawal. Mm -hmm. um, or they're being told, use a qualified retirement plan, again, which works well if it works for you based on your tax profile. Um, for many, many people, it does. For most people, for most people, there, I've, what I can say is about the qualified retirement plan space is as follows. For many people, it's not a fit. For those that it is a fit, they're not being given the compliance support that they really need. Um, people are kind of being told, hey, you got control of your money. Here's your money. Invest it. Everybody walks away happy. The way things work with taxes um, is unless you get audited, you can kind of get away with anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can put it on your tax return even. Um, you know, if people want to play that game, don't even get, don't get any of these tax shelters. You don't need any of them. You can just put in your tax return that you had a million dollar taxable loss and call it a day, <laughs> right? You can do that. Um, and unless you get audited, it's going to work. Wow. <laughs> so... Um, there's no need to get a service provider, pay them thousands of dollars to do something that kind of breaks the law. Um, you can re keep it really, re really simple. You know, there's no need. So, but if I find that most people do want to play by the rules of the game um, or some are willing to take some risk, but people that find out after the fact, right? So as a CPA, I don't just help people set these up. I actually provide services to people that have these accounts that didn't get set up, um, you know, through Reshare. And people are gen genuinely disappointed to find out that there was a risk that they took or that they have this setup that doesn't fit for them. They're not happy to find that out after the fact. Of course. Yeah, that's uh, finding it out after the fact is definitely not something you will encounter. That's absolutely true. And, you know, Bernard, I've learned so much on this conversation. And, you know, we kind of talked about kind of the, the services you provide and reassure your company. Um, before we get out of here, we want to take some time and shine the spotlight on you. So tell us more about reassure. 
uh, your company, what you have going on, and anything else. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that. And the, the common theme across everything that we do is about empowering investors, uh, putting them first because they're the only ones that are going to look out for the best interests. The moral of the story, the upshot of everything is that you are the only one that's really going to keep your best interest at heart consistently and throughout. Uh, so it's about educating you more than selling to you. So we've got, we on self-directed retirement accounts, we set up QRPs, 401ks, checkbook IRAs, all 51 domiciles, IRA trusts. We do it all so that we are totally unbiased. Um, the way we work is rather than having people pick how they're going to set up their account beforehand, um, you get signed up with us and then we're going to take all the time that's necessary uh, to help you navigate and get your account set up with your eyes wide open. Uh, so we feel strongly that everybody that wants to invest in alternatives should have one of these, but they need a guide. We're here to be that guide. Now, we do work to help with traditional. I'm involved in, at least me personally, estate planning, tax strategy, traditional financial stuff, uh, working with high net worth clients with on all the complexity. Uh, so it goes from, and even in that space, again, we don't feel you should, people say, here's a crazy, you want to hear a crazy statistic? Okay. If you pay a financial advisor, I had somebody call me up last week. The financial advisor is only 1%. And I told the person, if you, let's put the number in a spreadsheet. Over 30 years, you are giving away 60% of your net worth to the advisor. Wow. It's a shot, only 1%, right? So everything that we do is kind of based on, we're not here to string you along and keep you dependent. We're here to empower you and you're going to come out way ahead. Uh, we believe in div delivering a thousand times the value. So we're looking for a thousand X ROI on our services to you. Love that. That's fantastic, man. There's a lot of great stuff there. I know. I mean, I'm gonna have to look into that myself for sure. Tell the listeners how they can get a hold of you or where they can contact you if they need to learn more. So you can check out our website, 401kcheckbook.com. Google Bernard Reese or Reesure Financial. You'll find lots of good stuff. Um, hopefully this podcast episode is gonna be showing up number one under that search. But we put out lots of resources because we want people to be educated and understand uh, what they're navigating. Absolutely. Bernard, we're going to make sure to put all that stuff in the show notes. So any of our listeners want to get a hold of you, they're going to be able to jump on there, contact you and learn more. Absolutely. Man, it's been, a, it's been a great conversation, Bernard. Thank you again for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Chris and Dan, thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. Head over to iTunes to subscribe to the show. And while you're there, we really appreciate you leaving a rating and written review. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, connect with us on social media or through our website at twosmartassets.com. We look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.